We quickly flew back to the shrine with the supplies tied to my broom and dropped straight towards the roof. Hey, Raymond. Uh, help me out here. Aren't you supposed to do this job? I need to know where the leak is. All right, it's over there. Let me hold the umbrella over, over it so more water doesn't come in. Might want to put up a barrier too. So, you've done serious research with- oh, what, what? oh my gosh, she's someone close. It's kind of creeping me out, man. It's, I'm not gonna lie, it's fucking creeping me out, man! Holy crap! I don't know why- just, Oh, man. She just- she only zoomed in, but I don't know why it's creeping me the fuck out, man. Oh, uh, did I? It was something always at the back of my mind, but I can't remember it seriously focusing on it before then. I can't remember. Maybe I had an urge to become a yokai when I was a kid? Hmm, I suppose that does sound like something you'd say, Marissa. I guess you're still a kid at heart. I finished my inspection of the broken roof and began removing the affected plank. Are you saying we want to become immortality is childish? Isn't part of becoming an adult about facing unpleasant truths? I finished prying out the old board and started nailing in the new one. It's not an unpleasant truth if I can do something about it, is it? I guess not. I quickly finished the roofing while Raymu stood there quietly. It wasn't much work, really. Hey Raymu, why don't you have stuff for repairs on hand? I figured this had to happen often enough to be something you're prepared for. Actually, I don't know how to repair the roof. Usually when the shrine gets damaged, it's destroyed all the way. I don't usually have a roof along. I usually don't have roof long enough for it to get leaks. Oh, huh. I guess that makes sense. Just next time you decide to use the shrine as a backstop for Demaku, check it for damage before it starts raining. Right, right. I suppose it'd be mean to send you back at this hour without a meal. Let's get something hot. Cook. Let's get something hot cooking. We headed in out of the rain and Raymond cooked us a vegetable stew. So, anything else happened re recently? Oh, Genji woke up from his hibernation. He's still sluggish though. It took him a couple of tries to remember I wasn't my mother. That's gotta be annoying. You think he'd ever remember by now? Knowing Genji, he'd probably catch on when he's training my daughter. Can't expect too much from a turtle, even one that floats. Still, that's a long time off. Yeah, 10 or so years. Hey, you should finish that stew before it gets cold. Alright. So, while you were checking up on him, did Mima pop up? No, but I felt her presence, same as always. I also had to shoo off the necromancer cat. One day, you're almost gonna have to give her a talking to. I don't know that Kasha deter that Kasha's determined. Yomu might end up getting taken home. A kind of y cat yokai is said to bring the souls of sinners to the hell. Yeah, just, there you go. Then you can go handle it. Either way, it'll stop being my problem. Maybe you should have the Hakurei Yinga orbs try to seduce her. Would that even work? Either way, it'd be pretty funny. True. We chatted some more about various people that dropped by the shrine for a bit. Then I said my goodbyes and headed home. It was still raining when I got back. That was going to take make my training much more difficult, I guess. I could. He talked to Kuyishi is important because it does give you a good con a context of what's going to happen next. But at the same time, let's see. I'm, d I'm debating, I'm debating, I'm debating. Um, research, I guess? Depends. But at the same time, I was really talking to Kuish because she always got some interest, like Reimu. Then, uh, what else? Let's try research. I had to have, I didn't have access to all my notes, but I could study related subjects, specifically magical concentration. Admittedly, that wasn't really my best field, it uses a lot of theories, and considering most of my skills were self-taught, I had a lot of catching up to do. Fortunately, I had a pile of Pache's book to help me, as well as Mima's wor one work on the matter. I worked long into the night studying theories. Finally, when I stopped reading words correctly, I decided to call it a night. This would take some more to work understand fully. Okay, okay. I decided I had made a mistake giving my notes to Raisin. I kept wondering what I'm going to get back from her. Would it be another dead end or would Aaron give me something I can use? I was really interested to see if distillation could work. But I needed those notes back before I could know if I should even bother. What a pain. Maybe I could just go borrow a book from the Scarlet Devil Mansion and if that didn't work I could play with one of the residents. That decided I'd grab my broom and head it out to the mansion to clear my head. Sorry Marissa but the mistress ordered me to take down all intruders. Well, it seemed like I'd get a diversion faster than I expected. Remy must be irked about the rain. Still, it's better to have her watching a fight than getting jumped by the little vampire. Sorry, Melee, but I'm not going to lose to you. I bet I promise to make the fighting interesting for your boss. Ultimate shortwave. 
Not this time, Marissa. Rainbow Wind Chime. Mainly wasn't the best test cut case, but my bullets spread started seemed to chew through hers pretty well. It needs some work though. Still, Mailing got hit, so the match was mine. Sorry, Mailing, but I'm not the type to hold back. Better luck next time. Oh my god, I'm getting real tired trying to read, but I can't, I can't give up yet. Not yet, not yet. But fuck. Alright, Demaku skills improved, I guess. Uh, to a fairy level, that's something. Yeah, I'll, I'll take it. Oh, damn it. Uh, I began rooting up through the massive shelves of the underground library for something interesting. Then I felt a growing sense of unease. It took me a moment to connect it to the voice at the edge of my hearing. One for sorrow, two for joy, three for a girl, four for a boy, five for silver, six for gold, and seven for a secret never to be told. I have no idea what's going on here. Only one person can make that nursery round sound so creepy and innocent at the same time. I followed the voice to find Flandre lying on one of the tables, reading a book while kicking her feet in the air idly. Hello, Flandre. What are you playing today? I'm not playing, I'm researching. Oh, Marissa, you came back. I was just looking up stuff on human death. Patrick gave me this book and said it was the most truthful of the lies. That's odd, even for Patchley. But if they're lies, doesn't that mean in the end they're useless? Hey, that's right. So, why were you looking stuff on death? Flandre sat up on the table, her odd brain ticking, tingling as she moved. I was trying to figure out why you were so certain you didn't want to die. I mean, death is like when you destroy a living thing, but I destroy things like fairies all the time. Well, fairies are different from humans. Humans that are destroyed don't come back again. Flandre seemed to think about that matter a bit. But in all the stories I read, humans either go somewhere else or get reincarnated. Doesn't that mean they come back? I was pretty sure reincarnation was the best I could hope for. When you're reincarnated, you become a different person. I want to be the same Marissa. I'd be someone else. Not the same Marissa? But Marissa is always Marissa. This is too confusing. Okay, to be fair, that I'm not gonna lie, that can be confusing for a little kid. It does sound like it. Uh, yeah. I'm not gonna give uh, too, too much crap on Flandre for that. Hey, let's go have some sweets with Big Sis. Actually, why is Romilla even awake? It's pretty early. Big Sis sometimes goes to bed really late. But sometimes Saki makes her go to bed early. Flandre leaped off the table and sped off down the corridors. I followed as best as I could. I still didn't have the mansion memorized yet. Fortunately, Flandre was more than happy to stop and tell me to hurry up. Eventually, we arrived at Mermelia's indoor sitting room. Big sister, Marissa came over today. I saw her entrance. Welcome, Mr. Curious I trust your stay so far has been enjoyable. Uh, uh, let's see, let's see. What, I'm trying to think what question exactly. It's been interesting. Hey, Flandre, have you asked your sister about the, your question? Oh yeah, good idea. A question? Can you explain human deaths, big sister? What? Why are you asking about human death? Oh crap, I better find a quick excuse before Flandre. Well, because Marissa seems to be trying to avoid it so much. I was curious. Too late. Oh ho ho, so the witch seems seeks to alter her fate, eh? Something like that, I guess. Well, I can't help you there. I can't drain enough blood in one sitting to make you one of our kind. You have to try another path, but I suppose you knew that already. In any case, Flandre, when humans die, they never return exactly the same. Just as one of the dolls you break can never be fully repaired. However, humans break down normally, even without outside help. So does that mean one day Saki and Marissa will go away forever? Uh, well... Suddenly, Saki was there with the snacks. She bowed towards Fl Flandre. Some very distant day, but even though I'll stay human, I'll stay by my mistress' side for as long as I live. But of course, it's your fate to serve me and my fate to have the perfect mate. I patted Flandre in the head. And I intend to find a way to live forever, so don't worry about me. Good, I don't want you, to, you two to leave me behind. I smelled like Sakya. Still, that's almost a confession right there. Pretty impressive devotion. It's just my duty. I finished dining with the two vampires, played a few games with Jax against Flandre, then wandered off to Sakya's room to press her about the blush. Maybe she was seeing someone these days. <laughs>